In this clip we'll discuss an example of a convergent sequence and we will show the limit by using application of the definition of a limit of a sequence. So our task now is show using the definition of a limit of a sequence. So we use the definition of a limit of a sequence that the limit of n to infinity yeah, that the limit of n to infinity of n divided by n plus 1 equals 1 yeah, I'm sure you managed to calculate the limit using limit properties but here we face the challenge of using the definition of a limit so the solution is the following. So we have to show that for each epsilon larger than zero, so epsilon is an arbitrary number larger than zero but fixed. So for each epsilon larger than zero, we can construct or find an index capital N epsilon with the property that when we take higher indices, so higher subindex n larger than capital N epsilon, that the the sequence, the distance from the sequence to the value one is smaller or equal than epsilon, or at least the absolute value. So just take an epsilon larger than zero, we try to solve for n. Yeah, um, the way we do this is that actually we put the terms inside the absolute values on one fraction, write it as one fraction, so we get the absolute value of minus 1 over 1 plus n. An absolute value should be smaller or equal than epsilon, but we know that 1 over n plus 1 is positive, with a minus sign, so we can leave out the absolute values and just write 1 over n plus 1 should be smaller or equal than epsilon, which means that n plus 1 should be larger or equal than 1 over epsilon. So n should be larger at least 1 over epsilon minus 1. Yeah, so now take the capital N epsilon. We may define this as the onche of 1 over epsilon minus 1. Yeah. And the maximum with 1, because the onche of the rounded number 1 over epsilon minus 1 may still be smaller than 1, and since the sequence starts off with the values 1, we should take a maximum with 1 to ensure that actually n epsilon is a natural number. So here we find a clear suggestion for capital N epsilon, then for any n at least equal to capital N epsilon, this is equivalent with n at least the value of maximum of the entire of 1 over epsilon minus 1 and 1. And if we take such n, then of course we have epsilon is larger or equal than 1 over n plus 1. Yeah, we can just look back in over here and here we follow the double implication signs back so that we get the absolute value of minus 1 over n plus 1 is smaller or equal than epsilon which implies that the you know, just trace the follow the arrows back until we find that 
actually the absolute value of n divided by n plus 1 minus 1 is smaller or equal than epsilon. Yeah, this is it. So now we're done.